Hi, I'm Syzygy, and as promised by the title, I will be giving a deep dive of the face smash hacking scene from the social network, while explaining and expanding on the cybersecurity and programming terms that are thrown around. Just like most great ideas, face smash was conceived by a couple of drunk college students on a Tuesday night. The execution, however, was done by the one and only, Zuck. 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 Let's get into it. So after Billy Olsen's suggestion, Mark lands on the idea of creating a website where users compare Harvard girls by their Facebook photos. No, it's not the Facebook you're thinking of. Mark actually gets the idea for that later in the movie, and I'm sure you can guess how he came up with the name. Before Facebook.com, universities used to have public directories of their students and faculty that contained their name, picture, and short bio. Some colleges still have this, but it's typically only for faculty. Harvard is unique in that it organizes its students in various houses like Adams, Lowell, Kirkland, and so on. They organize their online Facebooks under the same structure. So what exactly is the task here? Well, Mark needs to download as many pictures of Harvard girls as possible to his computer to use in his website. And these house-specific Facebooks are definitely the best place to get them from. Now, downloading images from a website, even back in 2003, is generally a very simple process. If you can see the image on the web page you're on, chances are you can just right click on it and download it, just like that. Now I say that this is generally simple because some images are embedded within other HTML elements, which means you have to delve into the source code to get the downloadable URL. Nonetheless, the image is fully attainable. So if it's that easy, how is this really hacking? Well. If you want to manually download thousands of images of Harvard students by right clicking and, and clicking a download button, by all means go ahead. It technically will give you the same result. But it's already 10pm on a Tuesday night, our man Zuck is a little buzzed from his brewski and he's coming off a breakup. I think it's in his best interest to code his way through this. So without further ado, let the hacking begin. First up is Kirkland. They keep everything open and allow indexes in their Apache configuration, so a little wget magic is all that's necessary to download the entire Kirkland Facebook. Kid stuff. Wow, okay. This is why Jesse Eisenberg is such a great actor. His quick and witty narration in this scene could make anything sound sophisticated and complex. But when we break it down, you'll see that it's really just Jesse's performance, combined with some technical jargon that makes this scene seem like it's out of the average viewer's comprehension. It's actually just a few terminal commands along with some scripting. Let's break it down. The Kirkland site is open, which means what you think, it, it's public to all users. It doesn't require authentication and it isn't restricted by what network you're on. Next, the site allows indexes in their Apache config. If you're not familiar, Apache is one of the most popular and widely used web servers on the internet. A web server basically serves as the middleman between the client, like your computer or phone, and the server where the website code and its assets are stored. You type in a website's URL in your browser and the web server pieces together all necessary files and returns them. And since this Apache web server allows indexes, we can not only get the website's typical pages, but also get a page that returns with links to every image used in a certain directory. Mark gets lucky here that the Kirkland devs were organized enough to have a directory just for Facebook photos of females. Just what he needs for FaceMash. Now for the wget magic. wget is a network utility that comes with Mac or Linux that can be used to download files from the internet. Just like magic. All Mark has to do is CD into the directory where he wants the images downloaded and run the following. wget-a.jpg This designates that we want any file with the JPEG file extension. Then dash r and this means that it recursively downloads each file until there are no more remaining. Then dash nd which tells wget to not create any more directories within the current one we're in. Just get the files and put them in there. And then finally, we put the URL, run it, and you should be good to go. Feel free to try this at home if you're brave enough. It's pretty satisfying to watch the terminal do all the work. Not too bad, right? Maybe not kit stuff, but we get it, Mark. You're a computer genius. Next is Elliot. 
They're also open, but with no indexes on Apache. I can run an empty search and it returns all the images in the database in a single page. And I can save the page and Mozilla will save all the images for me. We just, excellent. Moving right along. So now we have another open site, but without Apache indexing. Mark, being the quick thinking hacker he is, finds another exploit, where an empty search returns all Elliot Facebook photos. Although I called it an exploit, this is actually pretty standard database query behavior. An empty search returns all records. If the devs wanted to prevent this, they would have to add a validation case where an empty search would be considered invalid, and they probably did after this incident. After that, it's pretty much manual work. He saves the web page with the images and the browser automatically saves the files for him. You can try it out with any Wikipedia page and see the results for yourself. Elliot wasn't the most efficient process, as you can see him manually deleting all the mail photos, but hey, whatever works. Lovell has some security. They require a username password combo, and I'm going to go ahead and say they don't have access to the main FAS user database, so they have no way of detecting an intrusion. Aside from the fact that Lowell requires authentication to view their Facebook, Mark isn't as descriptive about how exactly he hacked in and downloaded the photos. There are some educated assumptions coming up, so bear with me. We can see that Mark attempted to log into the site with his credentials, but was denied as he is a member of the Kirkland house. He then tries with Billy Olson's credentials and gets in, telling us that Billy must be a member of Lowell. Regarding the FAS user database that Mark mentions, it seems to be the system that holds students' main credentials, like for checking grades and school email. This begs the question, if the site does not have access to this FAS user database, what creds did Mark use to log in? I did some research and found a site that claims to have Zuck's original blog posts when he actually made Face Mash back in 2003. It's astonishingly similar to the movie script, and I've linked the site in the description below. I'm not sure if it's an accurate source, but it shows that Mark guessed that the credentials are as follows. Username, as the regular FAS username, and password, the student ID. This is pretty characteristic of password attacks, as running code to brute force passwords is rarely feasible. Mark logically assumed that the easiest way the Lowell webmaster could communicate a unique password to every Lowell student would be to set it to their ID. He probably asked Billy for his and bam, he's in. Hackerman. Even though we don't see it here, we know from his later hack of Adams that he used a Perl script to download the Lowell images. Perl is a programming language that has libraries that contain similar capabilities as WGET. He likely used Perl to access the web page, provide authentication, and download each image by iterating through the page and parsing the HTML. Adams has no security but limits the number of results to 20 a page. All I need to do is break out the same script I used on Lowell and we're set. This one's nice and quick. There's no security, so that's a perk, and 20 results per page isn't really an issue. We know that a simple Perl script makes scraping images off a web page pretty straightforward, and by looking at the URL, we can easily see how we can iterate through the pages. The query parameter, page, is set to 1, so we can increment that value, resend the HTTP request, and scrape the images until we stop getting an HTTP 200 response code, indicating that there are no more pages left. Once again, this downloads all photos, including male students, so Mark probably had to manually delete them from the directory afterwards. Quincy has no online Facebook. What a sham. Nothing I can do about that. You heard the man. There's nothing to hack. Moving on. Dunster is intense. Not only is there no public directory, but there's no directory at all. You have to do searches, and if your search returns more than 20 matches, nothing gets returned. And once you do get results, they don't link directly to the images, they link to a PHP that redirects or something. Weird. This may be difficult, I'll come back later. Alright, Mark bails on Dunster after a few inconvenient behaviors of their Facebook. There's no directory, and it doesn't look like the old empty search trick would work, as 20 plus results return nothing. Which, by the way, is kind of a bad query behavior if you ask me, but it prevented the notorious face mask hack, so good job, I guess. 
even when you get a link to someone's Facebook page, it doesn't go directly to the page containing the image. It returns a PHP file that will then redirect to the actual page. This is basically a half-assed way to prevent malicious access of these students' Facebook pages. Kinda like what Mark is doing. The main issue though, is the inability to use empty search. You basically need to know exactly who you're looking for in order to find their Facebook. And I guess that makes sense. Not very helpful for hacking though. Leopard is a little better. They still make you search, but you can do an empty search and get links to pages with every student's picture. It's slightly obnoxious that they only let you view one picture at a time, and there's no way I'm going to go to 500 pages to download pics one at a time, so it's definitely necessary to break out Emacs and modify that Perl script. I hate to be repetitive here, but a lot of these house hacks really are similar. Mark takes advantage of a, you guessed it, empty search, and gets a hyperlink to every Leverett student's page. All that's left to do is break out Emacs and modify that Perl script. Come on, I mean, that line is just the epitome of technical jargon that's been loosely thrown around in this scene. The only thing I haven't covered so far from that line is Emacs. Emacs is an extensible text editor commonly used for writing code like Mark is doing. Vim and Nano are some other text editors you may have heard of for coding. But these are not just text editors though, it's more like a lifestyle, and your choice says a lot about you. Going back to that one-liner, Zuck broke out this text editor named Emacs and modified the script so that it visits each link and downloads its corresponding Facebook image. With all things considered, I still really love this scene. When I first watched it many years back, I was very interested in tech and programming but lacked the knowledge to understand anything that was being said. It seemed super complex and complicated to me, so for anyone watching who thought the same, I hope this video helped simplify it for you. Even though Zuck got put on academic probation because of this, I still think it was a pretty good hack. And of course, it got his name onto the Harvard streets. That's all I got, so until the next video, thanks for watching. Muñaño. <laughs>